What's up everybody, my name's Chance and today we're going to be playing some Ravnica Constructed. Now we can go ahead and get down our Aurelia. And plus the Hunted Witness, and then just attack in with the Hunted Witness, right? I think that's the best, yeah, 9-7, non 9-7 non Hunted Witness, that's crazy. So, Krenko, to the face. Reorder it, <laughs> and done. Alright, so there's my 10 Goblins. I knew they were hiding somewhere. Now the uh, the rules for this event are that we can only play cards from Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, and War of the Spark. So we have three sets to choose from. Um, if you want to know how to stay in the context, you just go up here to the uh, filter button, click it, and these three guilds right here are the uh, the only cards that we can play. So. We, we try to have fun with it as well as be a bit competitive, so I'm going to show you all one deck and this is the deck that we're going to be playing today. And, uh, and then I'll show you a second one which I already ran through the constructive event and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but it did pick up 5 victories, so this way you all get a bit of jank if you want to have some fun in the event as well as some, uh, some good stuff if you just want to get to the 5 victories. So, if I won't pull my headphones out there. Our deck for today is going to be Angelic Krenko. So we're going to take the uh, the idea of Krenko plus Angelic Exaltation and just play, you know, the three set cards with it. So starting us off, we have three Healer's Hawk, three Hunter Witness, two Samut Sprint, two Gideon's Triumph, um, two Hero of Precinct Ones. And I'm not going to actually be going through and explaining all these cards because we do have two decks to look at today. So. Um, four Justice Strike, three Swift Blade Vindicators, four Goblin Gatherings, four Krenkos, even though it is a legendary. Um, this is one legendary I will I will bump up to four copies of. Uh, two Tajiks, Legion's Edge, four Angelic Exaltations, and three Aurelias. And then, uh, of course, since this is only from the Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, and uh, War of the Spark set, we don't have all of our lands. We have the, the Shock lands, which I only have one of, so that is unfortunate. Um, and then we have the guild gates, so that's that's our only mana fixing, so be wary of that. Now, on to our second deck, and this is the deck that I actually picked up five victories with. Um, it's pretty much Hero of Mentors deck. Um, I, I kind of did a showcase on a deck very similar to this one, and it was just in the Boros. You use Hero of Precinct 1 and a bunch of uh, Boros colored cards and try to get down you know, a lot of tokens, buff those tokens with Mentor, and swing in for a lot of damage really fast. So the uh, the idea is pretty simple. So starting us off, um, and one thing I want to add, if you have a Feather that are redeemed, if you have multiple copies, throw it in. It's uh, fantastic. And if you do, throw it in and play more around the 10th district than what I have here in this deck. It's just I don't have the Feather. I only have a couple copies of 10th district. So, you know, work, work with what you have. But... This is a strong, strong color set nonetheless. So, two GERD for battles, which um, fantastic on your your 10th district as well as all of your mentor creatures. Three Simmet Sprint, three Hero Precinct Ones, three Sunholm Stalwarts, um, two Sure Strikes, three Boros Challengers, three Justice Strikes, three Swift Blade Vindicators, two 10th district Legionnaires, two Gideon Black Blaze, which is an excellent card. Uh, two Legion Warboss, two Deafening Clarion, um, two Tajik, three Conclave, two Aurelia, and one Solar Blaze. And one thing I would like to add about the Solar Blaze, um, if you have Tajik down, its value becomes infinitely better. Uh, because obviously Solar Blaze is going to make you wipe your side of the board as well for all your creatures that have equal or higher attack power than defensive, which should be all of your creatures in this deck, um, minus Aurelia. <laughs> So that, that's kind of bad, but if you have Tajik, then they don't take any non-combat damage, which Solar Blaze is non-combat damage. So essentially it, uh, it blocks out damage that you would deal to yourself. So really nice there, and yeah, that's going to do it for the deck techs or the deck breakdowns. And now we're going to hop over here uh, and claim my prize. And uh, now we're going to hop into some games with our Angelic Krenko deck. Go no. Gono, gonna be our first opponent. Gono, the opponent. All right. Um, in all serious, no. We have Krenko, so I'm gonna keep it, right? And we might as well go ahead and get the guild gate down. This way, we can ensure that we can play Krenko on curve. And our Aurelia is uh, 
Always nice. So we're not going to say much sprint our hunted witness here. I know that's what a lot of you were hoping for. <laughs> so yeah, Gideon's Triumph is some actual, actually decent removal. Um, obviously, if they just go saplings and sort of swarm your board, it's a bit less useful. But yeah, um, let's just go ahead and throw down the Krenko. We have four copies, and there's a reason behind it. So let's let's get it down. And hopefully we can draw into enough land to get this angelic exaltation down and get some get some goblins going because that's that's why we're here, right? That's the real reason why everyone's here. So, those of you that are new to the channel, um, welcome. First off, also uh, probably don't know that I always enjoy these weekend events, these uh, MTG Arena weekend events. Uh, most weekends they do them and they they honestly just bring like a new spice to the game and they give you some I won't say free cards but some cheap cards right um, Sacred Foundry is fantastic uh, yes I will pay the two life yes I will use Angelic Exaltation yes I will swing in with Krenko alright so if you use this combination I'll always say it make sure you put the Angelic first in front of the Krenko and the way to ensure that you can do that is just go to your options and make sure that you have auto ordered triggered abilities off. So there we go. Four gobos. Krenko's up to a two three. Our opponent's still stuck at three mana. Ooh, that one hurts. But we do still have four goblins, so you know the effect is real. Now we can go ahead and get down our Aurelia. And plus the hunted witness, and then just attack in with a hunted witness, right? I think that's the best. Yeah, non seven, <laughs> non seven hunted witness. That's crazy. Also, sorry, I just felt like a bug or something on my arm. I don't know. It's Georgia in the summertime, so for those of you who don't know, uh, the southeast U.S. is just so oh nice, so like filled with bugs, like mosquitoes and ants and moths. They the summertime is just just a feeding fast form. So let's go ahead and throw down Tajik. And uh, I think this is actually going to be it for game one. These uh, these games go pretty quickly. <laughs> <clears throat> it is indeed. All right. So Gono is going to be a Gano for game one. Yeah, Gabos. <laughs> oh. All righty. Let's get into a game two. Bubbles is going to be our next opponent here. And obviously we're looking for uh, a victory as swift as our previous one. Oh, and we got Swift Blade Vindicator in our hand, so yeah, nice. Maybe it's uh maybe it's Destiny. And an Angelic? That's that's a pretty good hand right there. 200 witnesses to sort of build up our numbers for the Angelic. So yeah, drawing out some lands wouldn't be bad here. Um, we are going to get the Hunted Witness down first. I feel like that's the obvious play, but uh, for new people, uh, you definitely want to get your creature down before your combat trick. Yeah, let's just go ahead and get the Swift Blade down. I'm sitting here debating it, but... You know, if we can get a swing in with Simut Sprint and Swift Blade deals uh, double strike damage, that's six damage. That's a whole lot of damage. Or even in a situation here where we play Healer's Hawk and uh, swing in. Yeah, we can actually swing in with everything. They're going to block the 100 Witness. We're still going to get the unit back. Now we can Simut Sprint here, which, yeah. Just for the trade. I don't want them drawing out every copy they have of Growth Chamber Guardian. And Gideon's Triumph is going to work uh, perfectly fine for us on some removal. Some land would have been nice as well, but as we don't have any removal in our hand, I, I figured, you know, good enough for me. Uh, See, so yeah, I think we're just all in. Right, that's gonna be what four damage here. It's not bad. We're healing up a little bit It's just we're really getting land screwed, but it seems like so are they right? Alrighty, well we have uh, 
We have exhausted our plays now. <laughs> We can at least kill the Incubation Druid, right? That's the nice thing about Gideon's Triumph. Oh, lost connection. <laughs> Hold up. Victory? Uh-huh. I see. <laughs> Alrighty. Game two. Picking up a victory up against... Um, you know, I can't even remember their name. That, that just sort of blew my mind. Alright, so we're going to hop into a game three here. Alrighty, here we are in a game three up against No Sleeve. I'm not sure. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, yeah, you see the combo, you keep it. Pretty simple thinking in my eyes. Obviously, we're going to go the Guild Gate first. Get down Hunter Witness. At least we do have... Uh, uh, Tajik as well. In case with things with Krenko go south, of course. We can play Tajik. Krenko's going first, though. Drawing out another land is not terrible because we do have the Anjug Exultation. Um, so now we're, we're kind of at our sweet spot, right? Four mana. I think almost all of our spells cost four mana. The only one that I think might be more is Solar Blaze, and I just, I'm honestly not sure about it, so... Nonetheless, um, yeah, I mean, mm. this is difficult. I don't know if I want to play the Justice Strike or the Hunted Witness. They're playing Golgari, which makes me believe that they can just get their creatures back real easy. Let's just play the Hunted Witness. Let's save the Justice Strike. They may have something a bit bigger and juicier for us to take out. But, uh, yeah. We shall see. What will they do on turn three? Do, do, do. Well, they're taking their sweet time, that's for sure. So, what are we doing on our turn three, Krenko? Sounds good. Turn four, Angelic. Sounds like a plan. Um, they're probably just adapting here. So, I am going to go ahead and block. <clears throat> well, there we go. No adapt. Okay, that's fine. What else? Incubation Druid. Okay. So it is Krenko time. Next turn we'll have Angelic, which is fantastic. Um. Well, hell, we could have attacked then there, because we're not going to defend this turn. Um, and they probably know that. So yeah, hopefully Krenko survives, then we Angelic. Ooh, I don't like that. Usually when someone holds their mouse over, they're like, that one's, that one's gonna die. Also, um, for new players, if you didn't know, you can tell where your mouse, or where your opponent's mouse is, sort of. If they are highlighting a card, like any card, a land, a creature, um, I don't think it works if you're just like, you know, have your mouse over their hand. But it'll show a little white border around it, so yeah, no blocks. But probably adapt here. That's just a no. I'm I'm so thoroughly confused. Oh, no hod. Okay. Um. Now see, this is a difficult decision. I know what I should do, and I know what I want to do. <laughs> two two completely different things. We're gonna do what I should do, which is pay the two. Ooh, also, never leave that to auto-tap. Never, ever leave that to auto-tap. But we're going to pay the two, and it actually didn't screw me over there. And then we're going to just strike the Null Hog. So, and then we can attack him with both, as I'm not going to defend with my uh, Krenko. 
and I kind of want to keep the lifelink soldier for whenever we do get down to Angelic just in case we need some life it's uh valuable to have we do still have healer sock as well but uh holding it back isn't isn't necessarily a bad thing also we have a second copy of Krenko in our hand so you know that's excellent <laughs> Braska. And it's the Death Touch Braska too. Thankfully we're not playing any planeswalkers. Um so it doesn't doesn't really affect us. Uh past the fact that it gives Krenko um a reason to not swing in, huh? Well we could still play the Swift Blade, right? And it will be useful with Angelic. Or Tell you what, we'll play the Angelic and we'll just swing in with our lifelink. And we want to go ahead and get rid of the Braska for sure, right? So they'll probably take it here, right? Just take the fob and be like, whatever, I'll lose the Braska. I got the 1-1. One, one. It's whatever. They would have just paid four mana for a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch, of course. Um no, they're gonna block it. Oh. Okay. They may just keep minusing Braska here. But they only get one more, so you know. Now we could have played it slow, like I said, and played the Swift Blade down. Um, having only one white source of mana is actually screwing us over a little bit here. Hopefully they don't just Assassin's Trophy my Angelic Exultation. That would be bad and sad. Mo. Hmm. Oh well, we got another. So we can actually play Tajik down on this turn. And give him first strike, so the uh, what's it called wouldn't matter. Or we could just play Swift Blade. We could play Swift Blade, swing in with Krenko just to create some more gobos, and then play our other Krenko back down right. Save Tajik and the Healer's Hawk for next turn. That seems like a fine play. It also makes our Swift Blade very big for the next play. So, yeah, I kind of like that. Um, I mean, at this point, Vraska is really not worth hitting, right? Sure, if her little 1 1 ever deals damage, we're in trouble, but they can't make any more. So. Oh! You know, after I just. <laughs> after I just explained it to y'all not to do what I just did, I did it. I did it, anyways. Okay, so that's what happens if you don't reorder your abilities, if you just hit done like a dumbass like me. Um, you get his base power instead of, uh, you know, the, the awesome one. So that's unfortunate. We, we didn't get the ten goblins that I was hoping for. Instead, we got three, which is actually a huge mistake on my part. Um, really, really big mistake. And I'm not going to blame our opponent, but I want to say that whenever people play so slow, to the point where I'm having to commentate on other things just so that way I fill this void and it's just not quiet and awkward, um, or so I can save myself from a thousand jump cut edits, uh, you know, then I get distracted and I start thinking of other stuff, and then here I am making misplays just because, you know. Chandra wanted to take an hour and a half. Um, sure, hit me in the face. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather have my creature buffed than, you know, still have that five extra health because I'm still at 19 health, so. Mm -hmm. We can just go to Jeek and give him first strike on this next turn. Does have haste. Would be a, a big. Big Tajik. Um... Oh wait, they don't have Death Touch anymore. I can just swing in with a Krenko, right? Yeah, my Krenko will get big enough. Let's see, three, three, two. That's, uh, what, six, eight? Eight damage. My Krenko is gonna get a lot bigger than that. Okay, just wanted to make sure. So, Krenko, to the face. Reorder it, <laughs> and done. All right, so there's my 10 goblins. I knew they were hiding somewhere. 
Um, they can't possibly muster up enough to defend this, um, so they got a chum block. Or they're just going to scoop it out. <laughs> All right, well, you know, that's 3-0, and so not to... Uh, not to brag or anything, but my jank deck just went 3-0. That's uh, that's kind of nice. That's going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below and a comment in the comment section if you have any suggestions for this deck, future decks, or past decks. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. That's going to be it for today. Peace.